tell lie once you have to keep telling many more lies to cover this lie and then you have to remember which lie you told to which person yakande marthu hogtive we forget if we tell a lie but when you tell the truth you don't have to worry you tell the same thing over and over again to anybody who comes to you like that till now whatever you have learned so far in your life it is akin to learning a lot of lies and then you have to keep telling new new lies to new new people whereas what i am telling you is one truth of all existence that truth is always valid whichever whether you are a child you are grown up you are old person even when you are dead and gone as a body even then that truth is valid about you that truth is what we are learning but as i said don't get panicking if you don't understand too much right now it's all right as we keep pro- proceeding further the way will become clear it will open up it will slowly and slowly as you keep doing mananam chintanam as you do your sadhana little by little this petal by petal this flower will open so that is the idea so yesterday the main theme was that this atma tatva what we talk about is very very subtle it's as subtle as the screen in the movie so once a father and son went to a movie theater i told you the son said uh, where are we going we are going to see a movie what are we going to see there there'll be a big screen on which pictures will be played and there'll be sound and video and audio and songs and dance that is a movie all right by the time they reached the movie started so the son started watching for the first time and he asked what is this what is that said so this is hero hero in this is a tv whatever the items were there inside the movie screen then he asked i saw everything i heard the sound i saw the pictures as you said but where is the screen and the father says that is the screen and son asks what is the screen is that man the screen in the film he says no not the man that which is behind that man oh so that tree is the screen which is behind the man he says no not the tree behind that there is something oh the mountain which is there behind is that the screen he said no there is something behind the mountain the sky which is there is that the screen he says no the sky is also not the screen there is something behind that he says what is behind that last i can see is the sky i saw the man i saw the tree i saw the whatever jungle the the mountains and then i saw the sky behind beyond that what else is there he is asking there is the screen behind all of this he is saying that is a reason for this movie but the child is unable to understand so he asks is this all not screen the father says this all is screen only because it's all playing on the screen but yet it is not the screen that is what i was telling yesterday anyat eva tat viditat anyat aviditat adi it is different from the known and it is different from the unknown that is the knowledge of the self because all the pictures which are playing on the screen are a part of the screen yet none of them is a screen likewise you think of yourself as the screen on which there are five things being played the body is being played behind the body the prana the life force is being played behind the life force you go mind is being played which controls your thoughts and manages your body behind that there is a discrimination a buddhi intelligence which is being played which understands hot from cold and good from bad behind that there is an experience which is being played when you have a hot cup of coffee in the morning on a cold winter morning you feel happy that happiness the feeling itself is one of the things the five things are playing on this movie like the man behind that there is a tree behind that there is a forest behind that there is a mountain behind that there is the sky and behind that there is the screen likewise there is a body behind that there is a life force behind that there is a mind which thoughts behind that there is the intelligence behind that there is the experience and behind that is the very fundamental basis on which all these five are working you can you understand this example so you are you the body yes and no are you the mind yes and no are you the prana yes and no are you the vijnana or the knowledge yes and no are you the ex- are you the, are you the experience of all these things together yes and no because are you the tree is tree the screen yes and no yes because yes it's on the screen no because it is actually not the screen the screen is actually the one on which the tree is showing up likewise all these five things are showing up on that true self that you are theoretically get it into your head 
that I am not just this body and mind and prana and vijnana and the experience ananda kosha. Behind that, there is something which has, which on which all the five are being played. That is what I am. Get this just as a theory in your head. You understand? Mm, very good. If you, you now you keep thinking about it. It's like a sugar cane. You take a sugar cane, piece of sugar cane. Immediately you don't get um, uh, sweetness. Keep chewing and chewing and chewing. Then there is more and more and more sweetness that comes out of it. So keep chewing on this thought. Uh, this is Pancha Kosha Viveka. It is called. It is out, out from Taitreya Upanishad. And Pancha Kosha Viveka is just that. First, I am think I am the body. Then I realize that body by itself does not do anything. There is a life force within the body which works through the body and therefore I am also the life force. Then you realize that life force by itself cannot do anything if I don't have a mind which controls the senses and the life force. So then I am the mind which is a collection of my thoughts. Then I think my mind, how does it decide on one thing? I have one more level of intelligence which decides for the mind and mind decides for the body. And then I realize what happens when all these things are happening, I have an experience, good or bad, happiness or sorrow. That experience is the fifth one. And who am I then? Then you realize that I am that one on which all these five are dependent. I am the one on which all these five are being projected. But if these five are removed, will I be there? Yes, I will be there. Like the screen will be there even if the movie stops. So death is not the end, birth is not the beginning. That is a very fundamental philosophy of Sanatana Dharma. Why death is not the end? Because at death what happens? Your physical body dies. Your prana life force leaves. But your mind, which all the thoughts which you have collected and the knowledge sheet, that is the Vijnanamaya Kosha with all your intelligence and experiences and memories that you have, Anandamaya Kosha, all the good and bad, ugly that you have experienced, everything put together, Transfer, gets transferred, like data transfer into a new computer. This computer has crashed. So what happens? This computer won't work. This phone has crashed. All the data from this phone is now being transferred. All the contacts, all your emails, all your uh, messages and uh, things are go getting photos, getting transferred to new phone. So phone is gone, battery is gone. But what is not gone? The data is not gone. This data is getting transferred into a new phone. And these five koshas that you saw just now, when you die, the first body kosha falls away. The prana kosha detaches from the body. The mana, all your thoughts that you have collected over the last one birth or many, many births, along with the vidyana kosha, which is the knowledge or the discrimination, the storage of all the things that you have collected. And the final is anandamaya kosha, the experiences of this life, good and bad, all these things get transferred into a new body. That is why some children are born singers. And some children, even if they practice 50 years, they can't sing. Why? Because that is come from a previous birth activities, all those instincts. So somebody asked me, just a question is there here. Swami, these thoughts keep coming all the time. We can't sit down and say that I don't want to think, doesn't happen. Since we were born, we are thinking. Have you realized that not even a moment passes in your life when you are not thinking? You are thinking of something or the other all the time. Do you realize that? Have you noticed that about yourself? Even if you try to sit down, you start thinking that now I am meditating. Even that is a thought. All this time these thoughts are there. They say around 16,000 unique thoughts, different thoughts a mind thinks per day. It's a unique thought. Then their repetitive thoughts will be there. That will run into 50, 60,000 then. Because one thought we think three times, four times during the day. 16,000 thoughts pass through the mind every single day. Average mind. So you can imagine how much your mind is so busy. Now to put that mind, to tell that stop thinking a little bit, calm down. It's very difficult because you're used to thinking. So the more number of years you have spent on earth, the more you have thought. It means the more difficult it is to tell the mind, calm down, calm down. It's not possible. It needs something to think about. So first step is what? Instead of thinking about these useless things, which will not last, as Najigeta says, it won't last tomorrow. So many empires have been built and died. These mountains are a witness to many uh, attacks, many uh, fights in this area. So many emperors fought for this land. And well, they lived, they thought they are the ones who rule this and nothing will happen to them. But for after some time somebody attacked, they lost the battle. Somebody else ruled this place. 
however glorious and amazing they sounded at that moment after some time none of this existed so the idea of that is that because this mind why should you think of all these things which won't exist tomorrow so let me think of something which is permanent so that is why i told chant something like i am divine or aham brahma or something like that so somebody wrote a question aham brahma swami again aham ego is coming no in aham so how do i deal with this now so what should i chant i said see first of all you have already an ego what is the ego ego is identification with this body if somebody says who are you without doubt without a moment's delay you will tell i am this body who is and this is my name it's without because from childhood it has been taught you are the body with a name so when the first time anybody asks you the first thing that you say is this is what i am this body with a name is all that i am but behind that you have to remember or you have to be aware that this is for the sake of loka vyavahara for the transaction of the world behind that i am what i am so the idea is that so many things have come and passed mind is so used to thinking that you are the body with a name suddenly mind cannot all this all of a sudden think that no i'm something beyond this it's not possible for the body because the habit if you've been doing something it becomes a habit then i say even if you remove the h a bit remains even if you remain remove a bit remains even if you remove b it remains that is habit therefore habit of knowing ourselves as the body and mind ever since we were born the first ignorance that was taught taught to us was namakarana namakarana samskara give him a name give him a identity that's where the problem began that's why madalla sa great queen from the past when her children were born she would not tell your name is this your name is that she will sing to them alala bai suddhosi buddhosi niranjanosi you are the pure shuddha like the screen which does not get affected by the scenes that play on it bad scene good scene nothing touches the screen shuddhosi buddhosi also you are aware that you are screen and you are not the movie buddhosi and niranjanosi niranjana means always busy always lost in one's own revelation all all busy happy within oneself why the screen what you think screen becomes sad when a sad scene starts or screen starts becoming happy when a happy scene starts or when it rains does the screen become wet or when there is a scene where there is fire on the screen you think the screen becomes burnt none of this happens it appears it is happening like that niranjana you are within yourself busy the outside whatever is happening is not affecting you samsara maya parivarjito si this idea that i am the movie and not the screen is maya maya means believing something it exists whereas it does not exist that is maya if you think it exists whereas it does not exist you, is that conditioning is called maya so the normal ch- person will come and see what movie ah the hero exists in the screen but if you go there it does not exist can you catch hold of that hero in the screen this is maya the idea that it exists there whereas it doesn't exist that is maya so madalla sa says oh my dear child samsara maya parivarjito si you are above and beyond you are unaffected untouched by this illusion that it exists where it doesn't exist like the hero in the screen does not exist like that you as these characters don't exist you as the screen do exist on your mind all these characters are being played you are a brother one day you are a sister or you are a son you are a father you are an uncle you are an aunt you are this and your teacher and a student all these roles are getting played on you you are untouched but somebody who sees you from the outside what will they think he'll think you are the brother because the brother picture has come up on the screen right now and you start talking behaving like a brother to your sister or siblings somebody sees your father comes and sees you the screen that you are the moment your father comes what emerges on the screen a son or a daughter emerges and that son or a daughter now behaves according to the father after your father goes your friend comes immediately the new person that appears on the screen is a friend you only as a friend to your friend then suppose students come in the class your screen now shows you as a teacher and students look at the screen but they don't see the screen they see the teacher on the screen you understand what i am saying 
and when everything is off you are within yourself this, you are just the screen you are neither a father mother brother sister nothing when you are doing nothing let us say there is nobody around you you are in your own room you are yourself so like that world is like a movie theater you are the screen you are people are coming and watching you when they when your father comes he watches you as a daughter or a son when your brother comes he watches you as a brother or a sister when a teachers come in front of you they watch you as a student good or bad student likewise anybody who comes in front of the screen they saw the movie they see the movie that is going on on you and you become the characters brother sister father mother uncle this that but at the end who are you you are just the screen which portrays all these characters so you are all of them yet you are none of them so this analogy you have to get it very very deep and right in your mind if you get this idea right your life will be right so you'll just do acting when some uh, when your teachers come you will now become a student and behave like a student when teacher goes your parents come you'll become the child and behave like their children when your brother comes you'll behave like a sibling when a friend comes you'll behave like a friend when your uh, uncle or aunt comes you behave like a nephew or a niece when god comes you'll behave like a devotee everybody will behave according to what who is coming and watching you if nobody comes and watches you you can just be the screen you don't have to project anything to anyone that is what happens to you when you're in deep sleep your projections are switched off you're neither a brother nor a sister nor uncle nor a aunt nor a man nor a woman nor young nor old you are just the screen in deep sleep that is why deep sleep is very ple- pleasant have you noticed that when you have a good deep sleep you feel very happy very fresh you feel because your mind has gone back to rest it has stopped thinking that you are a student your exams are over it has stopped thinking that you are a student who has to write exams so at that moment mind has withdrawn itself the projections have been switched off and you get into deep sleep where you are just the screen you still like when we switched off all the projections on the tv what remained is what is truth on the tv various things were played like that on you on your mind this mind takes many shapes it becomes a brother it becomes a sister it becomes an aunt it becomes an uncle it becomes all kinds of things in the world mind becomes but you on which this mind is becoming several things is the atman atman is the screen which does not change this is the fundamental truth of all existence get this analogy right and sit and do mananam on this analogy when you think like that slowly slowly this concept will start clarifying now you'll observe yourself you observe yourself now when a teacher comes what happened in me immediately sai ram madam sai ram sir suddenly that automatic response system is there within you your mind is so quick it immediately responds suppose your father comes immediately the daughter comes out of you the the son comes out of you and when swami comes immediately the devotee comes out of you where was this devotee when you were with your husband or father or teacher he was not there when were when you were with your children you were teacher where was the mother or unc- aunt or uncle in you he was not there she was not there but when your niece or nephew or some your own people came immediately you became their relative you were not the teacher anymore at that moment that is what is happening in our mind keeps modifying itself according to the people and situations around but behind the mind is this screen the atman which remains the same on which all these projections are happening so the person who sees you from outside that person is imagining you to be a sister brother teacher student indian foreign old young intelligent dumb talented useless all these impressions are coming on you as the other person is watching you within you you are just the screen which doesn't change that idea if you get right this is a panchakosha viveka you have to go one 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 lever behind is that man the screen no is that tree the screen no is that jungle the screen no is that mountain the screen no is that sky the screen no what is screen behind that which holds all these things the body the prana the mind the vijnana and the experience ananda all these that which holds 
that is me. Because only when I am there, all these five are there. If I am not there, all these five will disappear. That's why they just burn your body. If they thought you were just the body, then they should preserve your body. But they just burn your body because they know he's not there anymore. So where did he go? Where did you go at death? You go to the same place where you go at deep, when you are in deep sleep. Then you take another body and you are born again and you continue from there. So that is how life goes on. This is a very fundamental truth of life. I was watching this clock kept here. Daily one, one watch they keep here. Uh, one day is a digital watch, one there is a, a watch with uh, hands, one day small one, a big one, small clock, big clock they keep putting. Clocks are changing. Is the time changing? Time is the same, right? Even if I remove this clock and put another clock here, will the time change? It won't change. If this also will show 11, this may show as hands, that may show as digital display. Some may have a small dial, some may have a big dial, yellow color, white color, orange color, gray color, all these colors of the clocks. And there is a mechanism within. But is the time changing in any of the clock? No. Will the time become a good time or a bad time? Will that clock attain Papa or Punya? Rahu Kalam, so this clock is now cursed. Yamaganda Kalam, very dangerous clock. It shows Yamaganda Kalam. Does the clock or the time get affected by all these imaginations of ours? No, this is what I am saying. That this time, if you want to compare the truth, clock is the whole idea, the body, mind, processes, you know, thinking, discrimination, all this is the clock part of it. The time part of it is you. Even if the clock shows the wrong time, the time does not become wrong. If it gets delayed, the time goes on. It is not, oh, this clock got delayed, let me slow down. Time won't do that. Time will go on and on. The clocks will keep changing. Likewise, you don't change. You are time. Like, like time, you are that self, it does not change. The body, the mind, the buddhi, the mechanisms will change. So that is the idea of the truth, that you don't change, you are the eternal one, never changing. Whereas the world around you changes, even your body changes, you were born a baby, grew up a young man or a woman, then became an old man and woman, then you are dead. It just changes. You don't change. The one inside without any changes is divinity. That is you. Anything that changes is maya. And that is not you. So time, if I ask time, who are you? Time will never say, I am this clock. Time will never say that. Time will say, I am that which is being manifested through this clock. Time will never say, I am a digital display or I am an analog display or I am a regular traditional clock. Time will never identify itself with the clock. Clock identifies itself with time. But time does not identify itself with the clock. Likewise, Atma does not identify itself with your body. Your body identifies itself with the Atman. So you are Atman. Body is not you. Body is the identification that you put up on yourself. Like time seems to have been captured in this clock. But time is not inside this clock, time is everywhere. This clock is just telling you the time, that's all. Likewise, your body is just the manifestation of that Atman. But Atman is everywhere, like time is everywhere, the screen is everywhere, the man in the screen, woman in the screen, anything in the screen is screen. Like electricity is everywhere. The same electricity is making everything function. No bulb can say, this is my personal electricity, don't take to another bulb. Everybody is going through the same experience of electricity. But because of our bulbs or be our fans or lights or AC or a TV or a mic, the expression of that electricity is looking different. So the expression of the same time looks different in a digital clock and a regular traditional clock. The expression of that same divinity looks different in each person. Somebody is a good singer, somebody is a bad singer, somebody is a good teacher, and so on and on and on. All the variety in life is nothing but 
external manifestation of the same inside principle. And the best part is that it is not that it is your principle and it's not the next door, next person's principle. No, everybody is running on the same principle. All clocks run on the same principle of time. All I, I, electrical gadgets run on the same principle of electricity. Like that all of you are learning on the same single source principle of Atman. But expressions are different according to your mental makeup. Somebody is a sports person, somebody is a singer, somebody is a teacher, philosopher. All these are your mind where the thoughts are emerging. So the next question is where do these thoughts come from? Why do they come? Why do they don't come to some people? It all depends on what you have done all your lives from the past. Your company you have kept, the kind of things that you have engaged in. All this has made up your mind what it is today. It's a collection of all your habits that you have done for over long period, not only this birth, but many, many births from the past. But now, you have got an opportunity to learn new things in a good company. So it's possible for you to change your habits. It's possible for you to develop interest in things like these. So, so far you have not practiced any of these. It can come to you. So all the thoughts are nothing but your mind. Mind is nothing but what has the data transfer that happened from previous body to this body. It has its own way of functioning. Whatever softwares are loaded, same softwares will show up in the next computer also. They are not going to change. So the PowerPoint data software in your previous computer, the same PowerPoint data software will be tra transferred into the next. It won't become something else. Likewise, these thoughts are all your collection of your habits and ideas which you have collected over several births. But this, this is an opportunity somewhere during, during that time you did a thing, let me get an opportunity to improve myself when you saw somebody else who was very good. And then you thought, I also want to be good and happy. So God provided you with an opportunity in the great scheme of Brahman's uh, divine drama. He provides you with an opportunity to attend a session like this or listen to good things and thereby develop a new interest in life. And that new interest is interest in knowing who you are. So this is the main, main reason. So why Aham Brahma asked me to chant? Because otherwise you'll think I am body, I am body. So for some time at least theoretically if you say I am Brahman, I am Brahman, uh, slowly you are changing the habit of your mind. At least theoretically you are changing. Someday it will become practical. So, but that also has to be discarded. When a thorn is stuck in your flesh, you need one more thorn to remove this thorn. But finally what do you do? You throw both the thorns. So first thorn that got stuck in your flesh is, I am the body with this name. And that is hurting you all the time. Now what you do, you take one more thorn called, I am God. And with this thorn, I am God, you remove the thorn, I am the body. And throw both thorns out. Neither your body nor your God, you are. You just are. Pure rest of the self, without any distortions, without any projections on it. You're just the plain screen. If you think you're a God, you'll project yourself as God. If you think you're a man, you'll project yourself as man. If you think you're a woman, you'll project yourself as woman. These are all your thinking. That is why I say Mano Mulam Idam Jagat. What you think, that is what you are. Continuously, if you think you're this, 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 you'll become that only. Yad Bhavam Tad Bhavati. So that is the whole idea of spirituality. Your thoughts are very key and you have to learn how to change your thoughts by being in good company, listening to good things and encouraging your mind to do mananam on good things. That way your mind will slowly direct your mouth, words and slowly the body, everything will get trans transformed. That is true education, that is Paravidya, which is to transform you into a divine being. And from divine being, just being. Not even divine or non-divine, those dualities don't, don't exist. Just being, just the screen, untouched. So yesterday the last shloka we heard was na narena varena prokta esha suvignyayo bahudha chintya manaha ananya prokte gatiratra nasti aniyan hi tarkyam anupramanat. When a person who is covered by a certain delusion or ignorance or certain idea speaks of it, it cannot be understood clearly because many people speak of it in many, many ways. You just don't know which way is the right way. Some say you are Advaita, some say you are Advaita, some say you are Vishishta Advaita. Different people think of different ways about your existence. Ananya prokte, 
but when only the person who has learnt it or realized it speaks about it gati ratra nasti there is no doubt left there is no other way left you understand it because this is anoraniyan which is aniyan means very subtle atom itself is subtle this is subtler than the atom the logic is not you cannot prove atom by logic it needs a certain sophisticated device like that is very difficult to understand it by mere logic it's a very subtle logic therefore it is difficult to understand they see they have talked about anorani anu means atom and generally if you go about if you look at the history this these upanishads will be thousands of years old and they were not written down they were just being spoken for a long time till where the vyasa decided to compile it and bring it in a written text text form and then he did whatever was did whatever they and they did and this is what it is but look at the idea of anu atom when there were no microscopes electron microscopes nothing was there so 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 to say the first time the atom by human being anybody told was democritus in greece that 450 bc he first told atomos atomos means that which cannot be broken any further but 2000 years they dumped that idea that such a thing exists and then when did the next thought about atom john dalton was there he came up with the theory that there is something called an atom which is a fundamental unbreakable unit that is the last one he did some experiments and came to that conclu- conclusion then somebody else went above the, uh, over and above him j j thompson went and he pro- performed a vacuum tube experiment and proved that there are electrons which are smaller than the atoms and that was not enough then further investigations were made brother ford did some more experiments gold foil experiments they call it and he came and said no there is some positively charged particles here when i pass the alpha particle they sometimes get deflected back scattering happens sometimes they pass through the space something is there inside the atom other than electrons lot of space is there he said and also a positively charged particle inside which deflects the positive and so then they f- discover there is a nucleus then bohr did his experiments found that electrons ro- ro- revolve around in orbits then schrodinger came and said no it's not orbits it's orbitals it's a space then chadwick came and told no neutrons are also there not just protons and electrons and still going on now we are running through this, this the wave equation that we call it quantum mechanics now now they're saying we are not sure atoms actually electrons are particles or waves we are not sure of that but all this discovery of atoms started in 1800s whereas our yamaraja he is saying anoraniya that time itself anu he explained the concept that there is something called very fundamental indivisible part of all the existence which is called an atom so that rich was our understanding of system so you will say did they have a microscope did they perform these kind of experiments did they have these detectors none of it they had then how did they know that something called atom exists because it cannot be seen by the eye so how do they know that it exists this is what is called if you know that you know everything else if you know that you know everything else because that is everything it's like you knowing your own hand you don't need a microscope you don't need a lens you don't need a uh, you can see no this hand exists this is what you are if stomach you feeling hungry how do you detect that you are hunger you are hungry is there a in, uh, instrument required no you just know it within yourself because you are hungry you are happy you are angry like that yama and all these rishis just knew how far are stars where is the moon how far is the sun they told diameter of earth in those days without anything and how far is the moon and sun from earth how did they get to know all these things without any proper telescopes and microscopes and nothing this is that gyana brahma gyana once they become brahman they just know everything because brahman is the all pervading thing it is in everything therefore you just know everything by just focusing on something you get to know all the properties of that thing they did not have these uh, sci-fi scientific equations to say it but they just said it in one sentence that anu did exist yamaraja said it then back so you have to also pay attention to these little scientific revelations which are there in the upanishads the creation uh, aitre upanishads are very scientific you can actually match it step by step with all the discoveries that the modern scientists have made about the universe's origin big bang and all that aitre upanishad is just that 
So the idea is that our people always knew that because they knew Brahman. So if you know Brahman, you you don't you you will get to know everything. So he again continues in the ninth shloka. He says, Na esha tarke na matira paneya prokta anye naiva sugnyana ya preestha yam tvamapaha satya dhritir batasi twadrigno bhuyan nachiketa prista. So he says, Na esha tarke na matira paneya. This one, the Atman. Cannot be understood by tarka logic. Mati rapaneya cannot be grasped, cannot be understood by the mind through logic. So though we try to give some logic, but you only know it theoretically. You don't really understand it. Prokta anye naiva sugnyanaya preshta. If anya prokta, any other anybody other than the true knower of this truth speaks about it, it will not be understood. Only sugnyanaya. This understanding of this sugnyana will not come unless the person who knows it speaks and not anybody else. Preshta means, oh dear one. This is what Yama is uh, revealing to Nachiketa and says, Yam to Amapaha Satya Dhriti Batasi. You, Nachiketa, as you are, very important word. Satya Dhriti, you are resolute to know the truth. Dhriti, Dhrina Nishchaya. And Satya means the truth. You have completely decided, you are dedicated, you are committed to know the truth. And batasi is, is a nice little expression like kanna or like uh, putta we use like that. Batasi means also it means compassionate one. So he has observed that Nachikita was so compassionate on his father and the whole humanity. So probably he used this word. Tvam yam tvam apaha. As you are, you have attained satya dhriti. You have attained the resoluteness to know the truth. You are a very kind person, compassionate person and a very good person. Tvam drungno. I have not seen anybody like you, Bhuyan Nachiketa Prishta, a questioner. Never have I seen a questioner like you, who is so, so clear and so convinced that this is all that needs to be known. Everything else I don't need to know. So this is a praise that Yama is telling that. Why? He, because in one way he is defining how Nachiketa is a deserving uh, candidate because nobody before in billions and trillions of beings whom he has picked up and transferred from birth to death and death to death, never any person has asked this question to Yama so far. First time he is saying, Na tvaan drung no buya nachiketa prishta. Like you, absolutely I have not seen anybody before. But the first one I have come across who is so, so very determined to know the truth and there is no two ways about it for you. This is what Ramakrishna did when Vivekananda went to Ramakrishna and said, I want to see God. He said, you talk to God, I believe. I also want to talk to God. So Sri Ramakrishna said, all right, you can also speak to God. If you really want to see, speak to God. He said, I really want to speak to God. He said, no, if you really, really want to speak to God. He said, I really, really want to speak to God. Like that they were arguing. arguing. He said, okay, let us discuss it later. Let's go for a bath. He takes him into the river nearby, Ganga and takes his head and puts it into water. This Ramakrishna is all practical teaching, only no theory. Take the head, put it into water. And this Vivekananda is struggling to get out of water. That time is Narendra, not Vivekananda. And then he somehow struggles to get out of the grip of Sri Ramakrishna and pulls his head out of water, takes a deep breath and gasps for breath. And then he tells Ramakrishna, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to kill me or something? And he said, no, I am not trying to kill you. I am only trying to teach you. What is that you want to treat? The way you really, really wanted to breathe under water, that is the way if you really, really want to see God, God will be seen by you, not otherwise. So do you have that kind of determination? Do you have that kind of eagerness to know God? Then God will reveal. Otherwise, God will not reveal. <laughs>